weekend, a columnist with the Miami Herald tweeted that the coronavirus might conveniently take out a whole bunch of Republican voters who are apparently too stupid to realize they're supposed to be sitting in a dark corner hugging their knees and praying that the angel of death passes over their home while they lose their ability to pay their bills. Because as we've all been told, we have to keep everything shut down and bankrupt millions of families because each and every life is valuable unless those people are Trump voters, then apparently it's perfectly fine to hope that they die. Now tell me, is that what caring about life looks like to the left? Miami Herald columnist Fabiola Santiago wants you to know that prematurely opening up the economy will kill people. But apparently that's okay as long as the people who die are mostly Trump supporters. After Florida reopened their beaches over the weekend, Santiago tweeted Sunday that packed beaches should work nicely to thin the ranks of Trump, DeSantis, Jimenez supporters in Florida who value money over health. Now, of course, Santiago immediately faced blowback for the tweet, so she deleted it and said that she didn't mean it the way it came across. But here's the thing. Actually, I think she said exactly what she meant. And I think the only reason she deleted it is because she was embarrassed after being exposed as a hypocritical hack with the reasoning capacity of a seventh grade girl. But here's the ugly truth. Elitist snobs, particularly those whose jobs are safe, whose families are still well fed, whose political dreams of big government and socialist policies are currently getting shoved down our throats as the solution to this self-imposed economic disaster. Their open contempt for anyone who doesn't want to watch their livelihood go up in smoke is evident in the nonchalant way that they brush off mass financial devastation as nothing more than a temporary inconvenience. And hey, if this virus can take out a whole mess of Trump voters in the meantime, all the better. Just a few less stupid conservative rubes clogging up the highway. That is exactly what they think, even as they wag their fingers in our faces and preach about the value of life. And isn't that always the way of it? After all, liberals have no problem saying that gun supporters deserve to get shot so they'll know how it feels. They have no problem with Antifa beating people upside the head with bike locks or tossing concrete in Trump supporters' faces. Are you a conservative high school student who smiled at a Native American man who got up in your face? You deserve to be assaulted because you were wearing the wrong hat. Earlier this month, Denver Democratic Councilwoman Candy Setabaka tweeted her support after someone threatened to intentionally spread the coronavirus at Trump rallies, where many attendees are older people. Where was the fervent dedication to saving lives then? Or do those people not count just because they're Republicans? Is that the way this works? And see, all of that's okay, but if you dare to point out the effects of economic devastation, somehow that means that you don't care about life. Here's what's happening in America right now. More than 22 million people have lost their jobs over the past month. Over 100,000 restaurants, many of them family owned, are expected to go out of business forever. Food banks have seen a 98% increase in demand. In Harris County, Texas, where only 71 people have died from COVID-19, here was the scene in Houston Saturday, where more than 90,000 pounds of food were handed out to more than 4,000 families who waited for hours lined up in their cars in the parking lot of NRG Stadium. Globally, World Bank President David Malpas estimates that 50 million people will fall into extreme poverty thanks to these economic shutdowns, leading to higher infant mortality rates and malnutrition in children that could affect them for the rest of their lives. And I'm getting awfully sick of being lectured on the ethics of staying shut down to save lives by people who have no problem simultaneously wishing death upon people because of their politics, who think bankrupting millions of people is acceptable to stop a virus, but who have no issue with killing upwards of 3,000 unwanted babies a day for convenience, who want to protect the elderly from a flu bug, but who then want to deny people the ability to carry guns to protect themselves from violence who say that every single life matters, so we should stay shut down to stop a virus that we can't control, but who then turned a blind eye to violence caused by an immigration system that we simply choose not to control. This whole you just want people to die shtick is so old. The left has no problem with people dying as long as it's someone they don't like or if acknowledging it would get in the way of their political agenda. Here's the simple truth. The coronavirus might be deadly, but it isn't the only thing that can kill somebody. Poverty kills, malnutrition kills, being trapped in a home with an abuser kills, desperation that leads to violence and suicide and social unrest kills, not being able to go to a doctor because non-elective procedures have been postponed can kill. 
And saying that we cannot continue with a mass endless economic shutdown does not mean you want people to die, on the contrary. But saying that you hope a virus takes out a whole mess of people that you politically disagree with, that sure sounds like you're okay with people dying to me. And you have sure as heck lost any right to preach to the rest of us about the value of life. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, that you like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there.